Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? And welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery preparator and facilitator at Art Starts in Schools. This month we're continuing to explore landscapes. Last week we explored what a landscape was and the word natural. This week what I thought we could do is we could explore something called landforms. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that word means or what it could mean in a second. If you're going to explore along with me today, do you have any paper? So just like every week when we make, uh, I just grabbed a bunch of paper from my recycling bin. This is like card stock. This has writing on the other side of it. This has some holes and some ink. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because none of the stuff that we're going to be trying today is for keeps. So paper out of the recycling bin is great. Do you have a mark making tool? A mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So that could be a pencil or a crayon or even some dirt as we're exploring landforms today. As long as you have permission to use it, then that's great. The last thing that I have on my list today is a piece of fabric. And so in my art studio, um, every time a t-shirt gets to the point where it's gonna fall apart or it's got rips or whatever, I rip it up and I turn it into my art rags. And so this means that when I'm using paint, I can clean up my brushes uh, without worrying about it getting into the water. Um, and then, you know, Got a couple of other rags here. I think this is when I was doing some printmaking, so I've got some ink and stuff on it. That's great, that's perfect. We just want something that covers, so a dish rag or a towel or a t-shirt or anything. We're not gonna get this dirty. We're not gonna mark up our fabric. So any, any kind of fabric you can find is great. So if you have any of those things, you can be making along uh, with me today. But if you don't have any of these things, you're welcome to just watch uh, and get some ideas on your own of how you can be exploring landforms as we make. Oh, my stickies really wanna curl up today. Okay, well, that's cool. So we know what we want 
to have to make along. So I'm gonna put my curly sticky over to the side. You know who I am, so I'm gonna move that to the side as well. And then I'll keep our landscapes and exploring landforms up at the top here. Okay. So as I was getting ready to make along with you today, uh, I did a little bit of research because that word landform to me has always meant the forms or the shapes that I can see in the land. So for example, if I was going to be looking at the mountains, uh, because I am located in um, colonially named British Columbia, BC, um, I have access to landscapes on my horizon. Um, and so when I see mountains, I like to look for shapes. And a, a big obvious shape might be the, the shape of the outside of the mountain, which is usually a kind of triangle. But sometimes they're more rectangular. They don't have a, a, a um, sorry, a peak. Sometimes they're kind of more plateau or flat at the top of it. And so then they're like rectangular triangles. And that's how I always approach landforms is looking for forms or looking for shapes in the land. But before exploring with you today, I went and I looked up a couple of definitions. And so I found three definitions. The first definition I found was, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even write down where I got this one. Oh, no, I do. Uh, this is from the Oxford Dictionary. So this is a dictionary. Um, and it says that landforms are a natural feature of the Earth's surface. So if you explored with me last week, uh, we explored the word natural and what that could mean as far as a landscape is concerned. Um, and I didn't, you know what? I didn't really like that definition. Um, so I went looking for another one. And so Wikipedia at the top of their definition for landforms said it was a natural or artificial feature of the solid surface of earth or other planetary bodies, which is part of the terrain. All right, I like that one a little bit better because it meant that landforms weren't just on this on Earth, on our planet, but um, landforms on Mars or the moon or an asteroid, those are also landforms because they've got terrain. Um, so that one was really good, but it still had the word natural. It had the word artificial in there as well. I like that, but there was something still about that word natural that was bothering me after our exploration last week. Because humans take up so much of the earth, because we influence so much of the earth, um, over time our being here is affecting the earth, which means that its forms, um, its terrain, its land is being affected, is, is changing because of us. And is that natural or is that artificial? And so I, I like that definition a little bit better, but I'm still, I still didn't really like having the word natural in there. And then I went to National Geographic, uh, their website, and I found my favorite definition for landform, which I'm gonna be working with today, which is a landform is a feature on the Earth's surface that is part of the terrain. And so terrain is just another word for land. And so I really, I really like that um, it's a feature it's something that we can see that stands out, that's on the Earth's surface, um, that is part of the land. And so um, that's the definition that I'm gonna be working with today. It could be artificial, it could be natural, it could take a really long time to form, it could take, it could be really fast to form. Humans might have affected it, time might have affected it. So that's the definition that I'm gonna be using today as I explore. But as you explore, and as you look up that word landform, or you consider what you define as landform, your definition might be different. Okay, I'm gonna to be touching this sticky, I think a lot today, because it really wants to curl. All right, so to begin with, I thought what we could do is we could take some paper, and we could start by either drawing or writing or even just picturing in our brain, all the different kinds of landforms we can think of. And if you don't know what a landform is, that's okay, because now I'm gonna give you some examples 
um, that can help you guide your exploration today. So I would say that probably one of the most important uh, omnipresent, uh, the, 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 the most common landform that we have on the earth besides water, and we'll talk about that later, is probably the uh, a plain landform. And so that's the, when the terrain is, is pretty flat, there's lots of grass, uh, people can, or um, animals can graze, um, and that makes up more than 50% of all of the landforms that we have currently on the planet. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty important landform, so that flat line. Thinking of flat, again, I'm gonna write down, whoops, I'm gonna spell it wrong, plateau. Oh, and you know what? I'm using pencil this week. I think I wanna use uh, Sharpie because I know that shows up a little bit better in the video. I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of paper and put it under so it doesn't bleed onto my mat. And here, I'm gonna trace that again. Plain. Oh, and my marker is kind of running out. That one's better. Okay, so a plateau is also that flat area, and that could be uh, of raised ground, that could be on a mountain, uh, but it's basically the flattening of land. There we go, so a plateau. That also makes me think of valley. So valley is when it doesn't necessarily flatten, but it's between two raised pieces of land. So that could be between a mountain. That could just be between a bunch of hills. That's the valley. So the lower part um, that usually probably previously had some water in there. And then over time, um, it was either absorbed or um, evaporated or used up. And so a valley is another one. What about, oh, I said hills. What else do we have? Okay, what about when there's the land and there's a big earthquake? What happens there? Sometimes the land actually shifts apart and creates big um, holes or canyons. We have a pretty cool canyon in uh, British Columbia called the Grand Canyon of uh, Stikeen. And uh, it's up north near Telegra uh, Tele Telegraph Creek. Um, and, it's, and it's beautiful. So we, we have a canyon. Uh, that also reminds me of a cliff. So when the land is going and then all of a sudden there's a drop off, whether there's some land on the other side, you've got a cliff. Uh, well, what about when we take things out of the land? Not necessarily humans, but uh, water or um, rock slides. But then sometimes we've got in the side of the earth, we've got some caves. And the caves maybe are made by animals or water. Um, lots, lots of different reasons for, uh, oh, I got to write it, cave. Uh, oh, what about a desert? Do we have any deserts in British Columbia? We do. Okay, so we have one uh, in, well, uh, a Soyuz calls themselves um, a desert um, because of their habitat and the animals that they have in the area. And so you can go check out a Soyuz. Um, but technically a Soyuz isn't a desert because of the water, the, the rainfall that they get, the rain that falls on the land. Um, but nearby, about four hours away from a Soyuz is an area called Ashcroft. And they have um, a strip of land that doesn't have uh, a lot of rain as well as has the habitat of a Soyuz. So we do have a desert um, in BC. Okay, so uh, thinking about different kinds of, oh, you know what we're missing? We are missing a big important one, which is mountains. This pen isn't great either. That's okay, mountains. 
almost off the top of the end of the page. Okay, so mountains. So we have two pretty important mountain ranges in BC. We have the uh, Fraser Mountain Range and, or sorry, not the Fraser, um, the Rocky Mountains and the Columbia Mountains. And so um, those, right, are big landforms. They, they, um, they're a feature. We can see them from close up, how tall they are. We can tell how steep they are when we're walking on them. And when we're far away, they tower over us. They take up a lot of our, um, our landscape. They take up a lot of space. Um, so mountains are a big, important one. Mountains are also interesting if we start to think about um, how the land is formed from mountains. So if we got mountains and it snows, there's a snow, some of that snow gets evaporated, but some of that snow also turns into water, which turns into rivers. So rivers is an interesting one because we're talking specifically about land, right? We're talking about how um, uh, land that we can walk on um, is a landform. But if the water flows over a long period of time, it starts to affect the land, right? It creates um, more spaces for the water as it runs over it over time. Um, it might get deeper. It might be muddy, it might um, erode or take away some of the land on the side. And so rivers, I think, are also an important landform. So if you think about water as well, um, there's also islands, right? So land that is surrounded by water. We have two pretty big islands. Uh, in BC, the colonial name Queen Charlotte Island or Haida Gwaii, um, and then Vancouver Island are two really big islands. That sometimes when you're on the island, you don't even you don't even realize you're on an island because you can't see the water if maybe you're in the middle or there's a city or a town um, around you and you can only see the buildings. And so islands are another one. What about the area on the edge of islands or even mainland if we had um if we were in say vancouver which is uh around the area where i am right now um we have water that surrounds the outside of the land and when the water comes in what's this area here we got beaches right? That's land as well. And so it brings in some sand because the water has moved over and picked up um, sand from the stones and from uh, debris, garbage, um, fish bones, a whole bunch of things that have been ground over time with the water and that comes up onto the beach, seashells. And so we've got beaches. We also have rocky beaches sometimes, but that's terrain as well. What if instead of following onto dry land, we were to follow the beaches underwater? Is there land underwater? Maybe the fish don't need it, but what about animals and creatures that crawl along the bottom of the ocean? And what about coral and rocks and caves that form underwater? Sometimes we have um, abysses or trenches. So those are areas that are kind of like, kind of like the cliff and the canyon we were looking at before. But humans can't even go down there because it's so deep that um, they can't, uh, they can't stand the pressure. So that the, it's just too dangerous for them to go down there. And so there's also, here I'm going to put abyss, trench. So even though it's underwater, it's still landforms, right? I would say that if we were going to be talking about oceans or lakes, we're probably talking about something that would be called a water form, right? Because we're looking at landform. But that doesn't mean that water isn't something that we could be considering when we think about landform, because there is that land 
under the water. All right, so I, I could probably think of a few more, but here's here's some good some good ones that we definitely have um, in BC. And so now what I want us to do with these ideas in mind, is I want us to take our fabric and I want us to explore uh, potential landforms that we could imagine on a landscape. So here, I'm gonna move these over to the side so we can keep them. Or what you can do is you could actually rip the paper. And here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of the parts where I, haven't writ where I haven't written anything so we can use some of my paper and I can show you what I'm talking about. I got this section over here. And I'm gonna take some of my beach drawing here. There we go. Okay. I also have some more paper. This is the paper dripped as well. So I'm gonna rip it up. So what I could do is I could just take my fabric to begin with and I could just drop it in front of me. And I could look at it as if this was land and see how the fabric forms and see what I could find. But if your fabric lays like really, really flat, which is okay, right? Because we talked about planes and we talked about plateaus. Uh, there is still some um, puckering and uh, forms on my fabric here, but I want, I want more drama. I want more um, shapes and forms to be forming. So I'm gonna take some of my paper I do like ripping and crumpling paper. There we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna put it over top. What's different? What do you notice that's different? So let's take a moment to look at our fabric and see what we can find. And if again, if there isn't uh, enough dimension or interesting shapes, you could pick up your fabric. You could move your fabric around. You could put other things underneath it. But let's take a minute to actually look at our fabric and see what kind of landforms we could see on our little fantasy fabric uh, land here. This maybe is a map that goes further or maybe it's an island. What do you see? So let's take a minute and actually look at our fabric and see what we see. Let's go. Okay, so that's about a minute. So I did a couple of things to my landscape here. I had this blue sticky here, so I decided I would rip some more paper in here and I wanted to put it up on the top because I wanted to make it look like there was some water collected in there. I was also seeing this area right here. And what I really enjoyed about this is that it has this, um, uh, the shape, so like a mountain that comes up, but then I imagine what if this was a volcano that hadn't erupted yet? And a volcano is also a landform where the, um, the earth is actually being pushed up, the magma is being pushed up because of um, the pressure and the heat from up. And so um, this landform right here might have a hole in the center of it where something, where the land is cooking uh, and could potentially um, explode and come out. And because this was up here, like a, maybe this is a volcano that's active and it's actually exploded multiple times over its lifetime and the magma comes down and it's actually created this really fertile valley in here where a lot of things grow from the, um, the ash and the great soil that uh, comes from um, the, the area. But it's so tall and when the magma or the, um, the volcano isn't erupting, when the snow happens, it forms uh, these rivers, these big rivers that lead down to these lakes that are around the outside of the mountain edge. I also decided to put a couple of pencils underneath 
my area over here because I wanted there to be hills. I didn't want it to be as um, um, high. I didn't want the forms to come up as much over here as I wanted them over here. I wanted some more gentle hills and maybe there's a city or a town or a village um, down here that is in the hills. Maybe there's some farming area. Maybe there's um, some forests. Maybe I can pretend the green marks on my fabric are some forest over here. I could build some trees or I could get some toys and I could place some things as well. And when I'm done looking at this landscape, I could do it again. What happens and what do we see now? What happens if you were to grab a different kind of fabric? What if you weren't to use it with fabric and you were just to use pieces of paper to make your landforms? What else could you use? I also encourage you that if you have time after you have explored in your studio, that you go outside and you look at the landforms in the uh, area around you. What landforms can you see? What's local to your area? What landforms used to exist, but don't exist anymore? You could have a conversation with, um, with elders or um, with grandparents or parents, caretakers who are older than you, and ask questions about what they remember about the land forms in your area and what has changed um, from then to now. This is just one way that we can explore landscapes um, and specifically landforms. And I encourage you to keep exploring them. What I learned today was about the different landforms. Um, so I went and I did some research um, about what a landform was but also specifically the kind of cool landforms that we have um, in this local area. And while I named a lot of colonial names like the, um, the Rocky Mountains or the Columbia Mountains or the Columbia River or the Fraser River, the next part of my learning, once I started to absorb, um, learn about or uh, see some of these landforms, is to start connecting them with what names they held in the past. And so now that I know um, the name of the Fraser River, I can go and look into more information about when it was, or that it is referred to also as the Stolo. And the Stolo people of the, of the river don't refer to it as the Fraser River. And so now that I've identified some of these landforms, I can go and I can look into the history and learn a little bit more about how they have changed over time and how I can care for them um, as I continue to live and occupy the various lands um, around my home. Okay, just like I like to do every week, I'm gonna leave the camera running while I clean up my space as we practice respect so that we can be making together again next week. Okay, bye for now.